Hello, my name is Shane Street. I'm really glad to have this opportunity to uh, tell you all a little bit about the research in my group. And I'm going to do that by way of a, a brief slideshow here. We do a number of things in our group um, based on uh, my background in materials and surface science, um, including we look at uh, some amine borane materials for hydrogen storage type applications. And in general, we do a lot of uh, various kinds of spectroscopy uh, for uh, not only for ourselves, but for uh, groups around uh, the department and uh, the campus in general. But I want to tell you about uh, two related research thrusts that uh, uh, you might be interested in should you join our group. They are uh, looking at uh, nanoparticles, and in particular we have an, kind of an ongoing interest in bimetallic nanoparticles for a number of different reasons. So let me tell you a little bit about the work we've done in nanoparticle formation from complex intermediates on polymeric substrates. It's been known for quite a while that you can make uh, narrow size distribution particles um, in uh, polymeric substrates like dendromers. And dendromer is just a, um, a kind of hyper-branched self-contained polymer and it's shown some time ago that you can coordinate in aqueous solution metal ions into the functionalities of something like a, a PAMAM polyamidoamine dendromer and by doing a chemical reduction form particles that are then encapsulated in this um, um, polymeric hyperbranch structure. Now we started doing things like that uh, some time ago. It, our interests at the time and still currently include um, metallic, bimetallic and magnetic nanoparticles. So that's the example here where we made for instance iron platinum nanoparticles in polyamidomine dendromers as prepared and you can see that we can make particles by this chemical reduction route and that they're very small that's on purpose they have a relatively narrow size distribution one of the things we're interested in are magnetic properties and so we use instruments like an alternating gradient magnetometer to measure the magnetic properties of these kinds of particles and in this case the the instrument uh, is recording as you can see a uh, magnetization as a function of an applied field and this result is called a hysteresis loop where it's measuring both the magnetization of the material and the field required to switch that magnetization and so the particles that we make as prepared um, have a magnetization, that's this uh, vertical uh, r result, but there's no hysteresis in there, there's no separation in the trace, so these are super paramagnetic particles as prepared. Uh, it takes a, a, essentially no extra field to reverse their uh, magnetization, the direction of their magnetization. And of course another way we might uh, characterize these nanoparticles is by X-ray diffraction. Uh, you're probably aware of X-ray diffraction, the application of Bragg's law to the um, problem of uh, interatomic spacing in crystalline materials in particular uh, we can get information about the spacing and also about particle sizes using a certain analysis like the analysis using the Scherer equation. So we made particles in, in polyamidoamine and if you anneal them that is heat them in a reducing atmosphere you can change th them and, and we can see that the coercivity, the f extra field required to reverse their magnetization starts to go up. So you can also see here that in the X-ray diffrac diffraction the, these peaks are becoming much sharper defined. The particles are getting larger as you anneal them, but the coercivity, this field, this extra field required to reverse their uh, magnetization, this history separation also goes up a great deal. Well, what we are seeing as we make these particles from as prepared and then anneal them is a kind of phase change. So here's the coercivity that uh, the, the, the hysteresis and the, the magnetization as a function of the applied uh, annealing temperature, there's a kind of phase change in there where they're literally changing their structure 
from a disordered crystalline phase to an ordered face center tetragonal phase and that's seen also not just in this change in this magnetic property but also in the x-ray diffraction. Well in addition to having done this by chemically reducing the precursor metal ions that were coordinated to the substrate we can also um, make these particles by photoreduction that is by exposing those precursor states to light. Um, so no chemical reduction here here we're hitting them with light and it takes blue light or, or into the into the uh, UV to do this that's a interesting question in itself but one of the things we saw early on when we did this photo reduction route here we're looking at uh, cobalt platinum but again it's just a, another magnetic bimetallic alloy when we looked at these in the trends in the TEM get real high resolution look at these and clean up the images a little bit using Fourier transform filtering we see that we are getting very highly ordered phase of this material as prepared, not by annealing. And so that led to us starting to investigate this photoreduction route for the formation of the particles, um, including identification using EPR that upon irradiation of these substrates, apparently what we're forming is some sort of nitrogen centered organic radical. That is, we are we are investigating here the mechanism of the reduction we're we're coordinating metal ions and making metal particles upon irradiation there's a reduction going on and so one of the things we've been very interested in is trying to identify okay well something's being reduced what's being oxidized and clearly it's the substrate but identifying the steps involved and how this reduction works is still something ongoing in our lab Another thing that we discovered was that the polyamidoamine is a very expensive substrate because of its high regularity. It's a synthesized material. Instead, what we identified was that the what was necessary to do the tricks we were doing with the substrate are found in polyethylenemine, which is, I don't know, something like 2,000 times cheaper than, than PEI, something like that. But that PEI, a hyperbranched PEI, will do the same trick. It will do chemical reduction and photoreduction from those coordinated precursor states. So that's what we've been looking at recently is our, our particles, bimetallic particles, typically magnetic particles uh, uh, that can be made in polyethylenemine and characterizing them uh, as prepared uh, for their structure and for their uh, magnetic properties. And one of the things we've been investigating then is okay the we can make bimetallic nanoparticles um, by chemical reduction but we can also make them by photo reduction and comparatively the crystal growth in photo reduction is slow we are trying to determine whether or not that difference in the kind of equilibrium steps involved in the formation of the growth of the particle is influencing their morphology, how what their structure is. Is it possible that by uh, um, growing the crystals by thermodynamic favor, you know, under thermodynamically favorable conditions, we can get the ordered phase without having to anneal them, that is directly synthesize the ordered phase. So that's one of the areas of ongoing research. The other neat thing about PEI, since it's so cheap, we can play with it chemically. And one of the things you can do to this PEI, it has all these terminal amine groups. Well, you can do a relatively straightforward bit of chemistry and add alkyl groups to that amine functionality. And as a result, change the hydrophobicity, hydrophilicity, make these things a little greasier or less greasy. But the resulting structure still has a protonated, a protonatable amine here in the, in the resulting structure. You've gone from a, a tertiary amine to a secondary amine, but it's still protonatable. I'm sorry, primary amine to a secondary amine, my mistake. Well, that means, though, that perhaps we can play with the solubility of this substrate. And indeed, what we've seen is that we can do that. That is, we can, uh, if we make platinum nanoparticles in these PEI substrates, and initially they're in these modified substrates so that the it's phase soluble in an organic, uh, a non-aqueous phase. Well, if we protonate those groups, though, that are, have been made available, 
the the resulting substrates now become water soluble. That is, they're now phase transferable, and the particles within the PEI hyperbranch PEI are go along with them. If we then have that phase and we titrate off that acid, we can return the particles back to the nonpolar organic phase. And so we've kind of followed this by um, TEM by going to look for the particles, you know, in, in the initial organic phase, then after transferring them to the aqueous phase, and then back again. Now this is still an area of, uh, of research, but one of the reasons you might want to be able to do such a thing, this phase transferability, is because if the platinum particles were involved in either one of those phases in some sort of catalytic chemistry, you could have it do its catalytic chemistry in one phase, produce the products in that phase, and then recover the catalyst by extraction to an immiscible phase, leaving the products behind. And so catalyst product separation is an interesting problem in the practical application of, of um, nanoparticle catalysts. So one of the things for ongoing and then future research is, okay, making particles um, like a platinum copper um, catalytic nanoparticle and investigating the chemistries that they do in these phases and then the recoverability of the particles by separation from those phases. So you can see the kinds of things we've been interested in and uh, I hope that if you have any interest in the kinds of things that we've been up to, you let me know, and uh, I'd be, of course, happy to answer uh, your questions. And uh, we welcome and appreciate your interest in uh, Alabama chemistry.